Hi everybody, and welcome to our YouTube channel. We are, as always, your hosts Arne and Carlos, and today we bring you, let me check my notes, we bring you episode 20 of the Arne and Carlos Quarantine Knitting Podcast. Yes, people, today I did notes. Yesterday I was <laughs> so unprepared. That's so uh, confused. And uh, so today I have I have a few notes here, so that at least I remember or it, they help me remind me of which episode it is and also which block we're going to be showing you today. Anyway, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the uh, to the podcast. I've been reading comments, Arne. Uh -huh. Lots of well-wishers out there that are uh, wishing me a speedy recovery from yeah. uh, my post-viral syndrome. Um, and a lot of people are commenting that I am feeling better, at least I look better. And mm -hmm. I have to say that I am much, much better today than I was... Uh, when we started the podcast. I think when we started the podcast, I was f maybe feeling 5% okay, mm. and now maybe I'm feeling 20% okay. Uh, I do look okay uh, while we do the podcast, but it is exhausting <laughs> for me. So after that, I tend to go to sleep or relax and but not do anything better. else. But yes, because I'm much you better. Eat, at least. Oh yeah, now that I'm cooking again, I'm <laughs> eating. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to say that. If you haven't tuned in before, if this is your <laughs> first episode of the Arne and Carlos Quarantine Knitting Podcast, uh, you should know that we've done 19 episodes before this. Uh, we went into self-quarantine. I caught the virus, so did Arne. Um, I got really sick. Arne didn't. Uh, Arne had to cook for me while I lost my appetite, um, and I almost died from bad cooking yeah well i was cooking you lost your weight yeah well so. i think i lost my weight also because i lost my appetite based on the virus anyway he can knit very well but he's not a good cook i am a slow knitter i can knit but slowly not as good as arne but i am a better cook so now that i'm cooking again things are much much better here <laughs> what are they having tonight tonight we're having salmon okay which is, you know, that's kind of everyday food here in Norway. Mm. We're having salmon. I haven't decided if I'm going to do the poke, the Hawaiian style salmon raw, or if I'm going to uh, um, grill it or something. We'll see. I still have a few hours before dinner to decide. <laughs> Other than that, uh, we're self-isolating. Um, even if we have some sort of immunity now, we still take all our precautions. So uh, our days are not as exciting as they could be. Although the past 24 hours have brought us some yeah. excitement. It's, it's more back to normal because at least we can go shopping. But we went yesterday. When we are at home, we don't go anywhere anyway. Mm. So, so let's we talk don't about, travel. Let's talk about, well, you have to tell them, I don't know, because I was resting. But there was some commotion and some excitement today. Some things happened. Uh, uh, you think about the fox? No, the, well, the fox we will discuss later. Okay. No, I'm thinking about the things that happened. Have yeah, we had like the people coming? The uh, no, I'm thinking about the DHL delivery and the commotion. Oh, yeah, that's there's a lot of things happening today. We mm. can sit for an hour. No, the the DHL guy he he lost his uh, like a car you used in the gas station. Well, first of all, he came and he delivered a huge like a box, a big box, this big, like wait, <laughs> this big, enormous, and we're like, oh, how exciting! And, then, and, and they had three packets this size. Yeah, so there were <laughs> yeah, so it was a big box, and then inside the box was a little box, and inside that box were three packets about actually even half the size of this with the new prim ergonomic needles. And uh, yeah, it was nice to see them, but I thought we were getting yarn. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big box. So that mm. was... Anyway, th that wasn't the exciting part. No, but then he he left and then we had some problems with the fireplace and the, the people who cleaned the chimney, chimney sweeper. They came and they found the card on the... A credit card. Uh, not the credit card. Like a, it's a it's a gas for it's the a gas, gas station. Yeah, you get you you like no, no, you swipe no. it and it's, then it's noticed everything you buy oh, and, okay. I, and then you get credit. I think. Oh, I thought it was a credit card. No. Oh. So, so we've been waiting for this guy again. Well, you had to call the company. I had to call the company and. So that happened. What else? And you made him very happy. He, he was so happy. He freaked out because he was filling gasoline and he couldn't find his card mm. and then. I think I just called him, 
called him while yeah. he was looking. So he was happy. So DHL delivery and, and chimney sweepers. Chimney sweepers and what more have happened? Our neighbor, I started my embroidery. Yeah, our neighbor came up. And the neighbor came by. And she's, well, she doesn't live here. It's her cottage. She was there and she popped by to borrow our um, hanger. Our hanger, yeah. To, and we kept two meters distance. So well, that's important. I don't think we can meet in, in the house this no. time. We have to wait until it gets warmer outside. And if then the weather is good, the if the weather is good, we could sit outside with her, and then she still needs to keep uh, yeah. a little bit away from us. Or we can buy that plexiglass, <laughs> and we can put that up yeah. in the living room and everywhere, and like or walk around with the plexiglass. Mm. I know a lot of businesses are suffering now, but I think that uh, probably. The plexiglass business is doing brilliantly, at least in Norway. There's, there's that glass everywhere now, that plastic glass dividing people in supermarkets and stores. It's pretty crazy, really. Strange. Um, yeah. But and, and I think I've said it before, and I, I want to mention it again. Um, you know, when the stores are suffering, like your favorite yarn stores, if you want to support them, remember that um, you don't necessarily have to buy from them right now, especially if you can't deliver. Or they can't deliver you but remember that buying a gift card uh, for yourself or for someone helps them with cash flow so that's a great idea in my opinion so mm -hmm. gift cards uh, or any other small local store that you may want to support you may want to consider a gift card uh, where you buy you put in some money you get like a credit and that keeps stores afloat I think I'm going to support the local yard shop today oh really what are you going to buy? <laughs> because I started my embroidery and I don't have a lot of colors. I have this, this is yeah. from the anchor yarn. Mm -hmm. And I need like two colors that I don't have in my stash. So I think I have to go mm. and support the local yarn shop. But the embroidery is looking beautiful. Yeah, I made a new embroidery and I'm working on, this will be a little pillow. This is the beginning. It's beautiful. I hope it's, it's not ended up like a UFO and mm. it's... Uh, it's this way. It's stunning. Wait was, and see. I was lying on the on the sofa resting, and Arne is sitting. Actually, I, I was lying on the sofa behind me resting, and Arne is sitting here, working in the computer. And suddenly, I open my eyes, and he has to he has to enlarge this design that he's made. So you have to make it larger. So you know, probably because you're so old that your eyes are not seeing properly. Anyway. You know, one insult after the other. First the cooking, and then... I'm oh, sorry. I just had to say that. Look, it's so dark where I am. Yeah. Anyway... I give you light. Yeah. I looked at the... I looked at the embroidery... This is a good picture. Sorry, I looked at the, the design, okay. but it was kind of enlarged. And it was very abstract. And I said to Arna, this is really beautiful. So maybe we should consider taking some parts of this. Like parts of this. And making it zoom it in and make something really modern and cool this will be like kind of like this size maybe mm. it's gonna be gorgeous like, not so big like this old-fashioned old small pillows yeah. and talking about pillows we had some questions we did yeah yeah, yeah. so you're rushing into the pillows uh, yeah because there was wasn't there like questions how to sew the back yeah, yeah, a lot of people are wondering those things. Uh, I was going to talk about my 24 hours, but let's talk about pillows. No, talk about your 24 hours yeah. first. Because <laughs> yeah. the, the, normally your 24 hours, there's not so exciting. Okay. Because you are mostly on the sofa. Yeah, so we're doing this dogma style. There's no manuscript, so, and Arne likes oh, to... Oh, you try to have one. Yeah, well, Arne likes to go like, ja, 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 done, done, but done, 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 But one thing finish. led to the other. Yeah, but anyway, let's, let me recap my 24 hours. Um, I've been resting. Yeah. Uh, I've been sleeping, uh, I've been drinking tea, yeah. uh, and I've been reading my book. And, uh, book. and I want to, you know, I want to, people already have seen this before, uh, if you have been following us. So, The Other Side of the Coin by Angela Kelly, uh, The Queen, The Dresser, and The Wardrobe. This book is really good. It's about the relationship between uh, Angela Kelly, who is uh, the Queen's uh, personal assistant and uh, actually designer. Um, and uh, about her wardrobe. And I learned a few things about Queen Elizabeth yesterday. Okay, tell that me. I wanted then to I don't share. have to read the book if you tell me. No, I, no, I, I just, I think this book is really interesting and I think the Queen is very interesting. Yeah. So this is what I've learned. This is what I learned yesterday. So the Queen is very modest and very frugal. 
frugal? Uh, frugal means she doesn't like to spend money. Oh. Uh, or she is very careful with how she spends her money. That's why she has a lot of money. Probably, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, she uh, only uses a handful of rooms in the palace. She's got mm -hmm. like a bedroom, a, a, um, a, 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 a wardrobe, like a dressing room, a bedroom, a dressing room, um, her little office, and a little sitting room. That sounds like us. That's pretty much it. I mean, <laughs> huge palace, and those are the rooms she uses. So that was interesting. Another interesting thing is when Angela Kelly um, is looking for uh, fabrics, uh, potentially to make uh, something, she always looks in the clearance sale mm. basket where the cheap fabrics are because the queen loves a bargain. <laughs> so if, uh, yeah. if Angela Kelly goes back to the palace and shows her a fabric that she got at 70% off, that makes the queen's day. She gets so delighted about that. How do you actually get those fabrics from a basket? Well, it's it, because Angela Kelly, she goes in the shop, yeah. the fabric shop, and they've got all the fabric, you know, but if you're discontinuing some fabric, yeah, yeah, or if there's only like a couple of meters left, it's not like. you take that and you put it in a basket next to the cash register, and then you put a sign, 50% off or it's something. It's probably good fabrics anyway. They're good fabrics, but the queen loves a bargain. So, <laughs> And then I learned something else. Uh, so. Directly above from the Queen's private dressing room mm -hmm. is the whole dressing area where they keep all the official clothes. So downstairs is her private clothes. Upstairs is the official clothes. And it's huge. And Angela Kelly has a staff of about 10 people working for her. But no, nobody can enter that area where the Queen's <laughs> clothes is without either being invited or if they don't, if they, or, or if they have an appointment. If they don't, they can't get in there, just in case um, they're washing the queen's private clothes or something. <laughs> cool. So even the queen's private clothes is off limits for yeah. for the people. They should. They yeah. should be off limits for. So yeah, it's an, it's, it's a very exciting book. <laughs> I'm kind of I think I'm halfway through, so I still have a lot to read. I I can't focus. So I'm reading like um, a little <laughs> bit at a time. But that's what I learned yesterday. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Good. So you had a good day yesterday. Yeah, I mean, lying down, relaxing, <laughs> sleeping. Yeah, it's you know the day the day that I you know it's the things I can do hmm. uh, in my condition. So and I almost finished the puzzle. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. gonna finish it tonight, I guess. Which I didn't help you. So I have to much. buy a new one. Yeah. Or puzzle some of the old ones. Yeah. Well, what you call it? Redo them. Redo redo them. Yeah. Well. So, it's up to you, really. Yeah. I mean, if you want to buy a new puzzle, go ahead. Yeah. Maybe next one I'll be able to help you. Oh, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm sure you're dying to talk <laughs> about the cushions now. Yeah, because you said there was like questions how to. Yeah, I have a couple of I have a couple of uh, of things that I noticed. Uh, or actually, I didn't read the comments, but Anna helped me. Yeah, but, but tell, um, tell me because I never read. Comments. There's a couple of comments uh, that are coming again and again and again. And the first one is about the cushion. If you are, you, because you made the tutorial, mm -hmm. which is available in episode sixteen, which was aired last Friday, mm -hmm. which would have been the twenty-four, I think. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Seventeen. Yeah, twenty-four. Twenty-four. Look for episode seventeen. No, episode sure? sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Yeah, you made a tutorial where you showed how to sew the uh, how we do it. the patches or together, like if you have. If you have two patches, how to sew them together like this. However, a lot of people have double knitted. Mm -hmm. And so they're wondering how do they use your technique if they have double knitted You patches. do the same on the other side because it's double. Yeah. So you do one one side first and then you turn them and then you... And do then you do it on the other side. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. That would look nice on both sides. Mm, yeah. But that would be for a blanket or something, yeah. I would suppose. Or scarf or... Yeah. So very easy, uh, very easy. Just do this. Do the same thing. Uh, treat it as if it's yeah. two two blocks. Especially for the double knitting, because then you don't have a back and a front. Because then you actually have two sides. Two, it's it's uh, double sided. Sides. So you, if you sew it together, you don't get a back because you do the same technique as you did on the other side. And then uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, but it but works. it's fun. Yeah. Another question um, is a lot of people were wondering about. If you want to make it into a cushion, mm -hmm. how do you do the back? And Arne and I have discussed have discussed this, 
and we decided not to do any instructions or tutorial because we don't know the sizes of people's uh, blocks. So it's pretty difficult for us to do that. And also there's many, many different things you can do. So Arne is going to tell you mm. a couple of things uh, yeah. that so are possible. If, let's say that one of the blocks is, if the let, let's pretend this is the pillow. Then you cut the fabric. I would do like half a centimeter bigger than this one on every side. And then you sew it down with half a centimeter into the knit. Mm -hmm. That's one, one way. But with a small opening and then you pull the pillow down and you stitch it by hand. Like I did on, on this one. I found this in the flea market in Amsterdam. It's very nice. It's very nice, but it was just uh, the embroidery and the back, and there were no pillow. And then I just... Uh, this is new? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. This, it, it was, it was like that. Pillow. Yeah, it was like this. Oh, okay. And then it was it was very ugly on one side, so mm. I just put went, went uh, turned it inside out, put it in the sewing machine, and so, like, probably so much, this much with the opening and then I pull the pillow down and I sew it by hand. Shut it. Yeah. So, so this if, one you if, can't if you, take out. Well, if you want to take it out, you just have to find where you did those stitches and undo it and take mm. it out if you want to wash it. But actually it's quite hard to find. I was looking for the stitches and I I think maybe that's where they are. You can see some stitches. Yeah. yeah. I have an now I, I found them. I was uh, looking for them, but yeah. I couldn't find them. <laughs> I have an idea. You could, uh, couldn't you just sew all your nine blocks together and then kind of calculate how much to cast on and then you can just knit a plain back. But, but listen, this is the thing. You knit the plain back and then you can sew it on three sides with the front, which would be the nine, the nine patches. Mm -hmm. You could sew it on three sides. And then on the fourth side, you could add a zipper. Yeah. Isn't that a possibility? That's, all, that's Or if you want to make a reversible pillow with nine patches on each side, you just sew them together. Mm -hmm. And then you do the three sides with a pillow. Yeah, or you can do like... Fabric. Like I did on this one. You could do fabric too. Yeah, like fa this, is, this, is, this one has fabric. And this is just one big piece of fabric. Which way? This way. Yeah. And then... You want to need to there's another to there's another piece of fabric on the bottom that is a little bit longer and this fabric goes up under so they overlap they overlap like this yeah and then you can just yeah so they overlap and then you can so, just add yeah. buttons so one small piece and one big piece and then they overlap and then you just fold this over and you make buttonholes and you button them mm. And I'm sure if you Google how to, uh, what, do, what would you Google? How to sew the back? But it's easy. How just, to just line the two pillow. Two pieces or... of fabric. One piece folded in like this, another one folded in like that, and you put them all over each yeah. other. And then you pin them together and you place that on, on the back mm. of your pillow and you sew around. Yeah. So, anyway, if you, if you ask Google, uh, you might even get. A whole bunch of different suggestions on how to do it. I think this is a very Googleable thing, yeah. don't how, you think? How to how to finish the pillow? Finish the pillow. How to make the back side of the pillow? Side. How to line the pillow? Um, and I think you can get a whole bunch of tutorials uh, and patterns, so you don't actually need. Our but help the pattern has to be based on your pillow because size, I've seen yeah. a lot of different blocks, and. Some some blocks are like more rectangular. Mm -hmm. they're, they're they're longer like this, and some some are more square. Yeah. So there will be different so sizes. Everybody will everything will be different. And it's okay. So, I mean the sizes uh, the sizes are. Uh, I mean it's not a piece of clothing, so it doesn't matter if the pillow is you know more narrow and longer or mm. if it's square. Whatever it works because it's a pillow and a blanket would also work. For the very same reason. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about the cushion now. Which and is we good. and yesterday we talked about the book. Yeah, we were talking about Knit Stars uh, three, which was which is the one that we did. Uh, right now, Knit Stars is out. Uh, they have an early bird uh, special where you can pre-order Knit Stars five, and you can also purchase all the previous seasons. Season three is the best in our opinion. <laughs> Not only because we were there, but there were some really good 
designers. Um, and one of them is one of our favorite designers, Crystal Seifert. Um, and she gave us a book um, from Fana, uh, which is the island where she lives. And she has this amazing knitting festival. And this book is incredible. And it's not a knitting book? It's, no, it's not it's a knitting book at all. Of the folk costume. This is a book, a very artistic point of view on a culture. The, 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 the people in Fana, they still use their folk costumes, just like here in Norway. So uh, do you want to? I can't. I'm tired. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, it has just all these beautiful pictures of people in their folk costumes. It's stunning. Go on there. And then I saw some very modern, you know, with a guy with a sweater. Yeah, yeah this looks like this, uh, is, this is more modern. More sweater. modern, but it still but gives you the essence. It's like old fish yeah, it's a fisherman sweater, and it captures the essence of this beautiful island where Crystal lives. Uh, who, take, who took the pictures? Uh, well, there's three names here. There's Ule Jern, Kristel Seifart, and Kis Sara Suvana. So I Sarah suppose Suvana. one of the two that is not Crystal took the <laughs> photos. Yeah. I'm sure Crystal did all the uh, creative direction in this really beautiful book. I mean, so if you like folk costumes, look at these. this is something you need to have. Look in at your these collection. amazing pictures. Uh, now I'm sure people are going to ask, where can I buy the book? Where can I buy the book? We don't know. We have no idea because it was a <laughs> gift, so we don't know. Maybe you can get it from Crystal Seifert. She has a yeah. website, I guess. She has a website. So here, look at this. Amazing photography. Or if you're lucky enough to go to uh, Fana uh, Knitting Festival, which probably won't be this year, but in the future, if you go, I'm, I'm sure she sells it in her, in her in shop. Her shop. Yeah. But yeah, this is just, yeah, look at this picture. It is just stunning. It's beautiful. So yeah, this is the book that we were uh, talking about. And it's interesting because we have a lot in common with uh, Crystal, um, especially our love for, um, for folk costumes. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, that's been a question too, Anna told me. People are wondering how it's going um, <laughs> with the folk costumes. You have one there. You can, yeah. It, it, it's slowly, slowly, it's growing, but it's been very slow because I've been crocheting and now I do embroidery. But now on this one, I'm down to the decreasing. Yeah. And that is pair number two. And I can't do this because I can't think right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I start focusing on this, I get really sick. So. So this is like the cables and stuff. Yeah. And, and actually, I, I, you told me about this. So I, I put my the pair that is finished over my jeans. Yeah, I'm not prepared so I something for you guys. I can show you how they should look with this le on my sexy legs. Oh, you're going to show your sexy <laughs> legs for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Arne, I was telling okay, Arne I'm that gonna... we should show what the socks yeah. will look like. And so Arne prepared himself. I have like a ladder so I can climb. This is Dogma. I go this way. Okay, so let's so, see your no, sexy can, legs. And, no, uh, the rest of the video will be like with me in this in this one, and you're sitting. No, people want to see your face. Well, I have much nicer legs. No, please be careful. Huh? <laughs> don't don't Look, fall. How far can I go? But it's not nice over the jeans. No, no, no. Are you Look. Be, be very careful now. Ta da! Okay, go down one, please. But look there and. There will be like a short trouser on this one. Yeah, there's a, sh a, a, a woolen trouser that goes over here, and then there's going to be like a like a really like, like a, a colorful band that will be hanging on the, on the outside where you can choose you can choose your own colors. It will hang kind of so it will hang down kind right. of like that. And we're going to do everything, and the 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 fabric for the for costumes is now cut mm. and ready to be picked up but since we've been in quarantine and isolation and sick, isolation we haven't picked up our I fabric up. i have a great idea while the stair is there on yeah. also a crystal chandelier here that may need a little tlc you know i washed one chandelier during this quarantine i think that's enough okay i agree actually it looks pretty okay you must have washed it recently maybe i should show how, how this full costume will look yeah, when if you want to look for the book. Because quickly. the book is over here. Yeah, and in the meantime, I can explain something. Uh, <laughs> some people have been asking for the pattern. The pattern is not ours to give out. Uh, the pattern is copyrighted. Uh, it belongs to Reuma, the, the yarn company uh, uh, here in, uh, in Norway, R-A-U-M-A. 
and you have to get the pattern from them. We don't own it, we cannot give it out. And uh, it is the traditional stocking for the area where we come from. That is the area of where we're getting our folk costumes. So it's very, very particular, and we have to follow the pattern to the letter. We cannot make our own variation. So we can't give you the pattern, and we can't help you. But we can do something inspired of the yeah. socks. But Google R-A-U-M-A -A if you want to get the pattern for these socks. Mind you, they are for a folk costume, so they might not actually they, be willing to sell them they go, for they, other purposes. And they go all, all over the knee, but you can make them shorter, I guess. But let me see. Here we are. Here it is. This is one version of the folk costume. You have long trousers and Which short we don't trousers, like. so we're going to have the one in the back hmm. and the same jacket. Yeah, but I'm but I ordered my jacket in white. I'm making mine in white. Arn is making his in black. This is another nice book from the Arts and Craft shop in shops in Norway. It's an old one. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't think this one is Different in print anymore. Is no, it? I don't know. So this is the folk costume the Arts and Craft shop shop yeah. is selling. And if you find it used and it's expensive, don't blame us. No, <laughs> <laughs> we just talk about it. Yeah. But yeah, we Norway. Don't, we don't price it. Norway and uh, has unique traditions with folk costume. We still wear them on a regular basis. People are wondering. Uh, people abroad or in Norway, everybody knows. But people abroad are wondering when we would have an opportunity to wear this costume. And in Norway, all the time. I mean, our niece is having a baby very soon, and in three months uh, it will be christened in a church, and uh, people would dress in the folk costumes they have for, one, for, they use it. for this celebration. We will have to wear suits because we won't be finished by them. In a couple of weeks' time, on May 17th, uh, not only is that the day when I leave my uh, sick leave, if the doctor allows me, but it's also Norway's Constitution Day, it's National Day, and you will see most people out in the streets wearing their folk costumes. Although this year, it might be a different celebration. People may be staying at home. But I'm sure that they'll still dress up in their traditional folk costumes. Christmas Eve, a lot of people put mm. on their folk costumes. Um, yeah, there's, so there's loads of opportunities to wear it. Weddings. Weddings. Confirmations. Everything, everything but funerals. Well, no, that's a big no-no. Yeah. That's not the party. So, yeah, that's... Uh, these were very warm. I had to take them off. Hmm? Look at the length. Yeah. They're great. So, Arne, it's, uh, you know... I'm getting tired now, and I think it's time to do the <laughs> Yeah, and we have block. something special. Yeah, let's that. start with this one here. I mean, they're beautiful. Uh, this block is very beautiful. Yesterday we had the Pimpernel, and we're keeping in the same theme uh, of the style of the design. So today we have the rose. Two roses. So roses. Or a pair of roses, pair of roses. Uh, or the roses. And this is what this block looks like. This is for our quarantine knitting Knit along. So if you've been following us, you know that we do this knit along with patches. That can be pillows or uh, blankets. And we have, uh, this is patch number 24. So we released 23 patches previously. And they are downloadable if you go to our blog at arnacarlos.com. Select blog from the menu and uh, you can download these patches. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, what about the back side? This one is actually knitted... In, in traditional color work, back and forth. There's yeah. no intarsia in, in this one. No, they're all in traditional. Oh, sorry. Uh, what I mean is the one yesterday, Pimpernel. Sorry, you, you had embroidered Embroider duplicate it. stitch. Yeah. No, no duplicate stitch. On There's this. no intarsia at all in our blocks, but no. yesterday's had duplicate stitch. But we have also one more because since yes. tomorrow is the last tomorrow video for... Uh, Month maybe? Well, or the, for the a while? well, actually, the announcement is that tomorrow is the last and final episode of the Arne and Carlos Quarantine Knitting Podcast. When we come back, which we will, we will have a different name for our podcast. <laughs> and it won't be going daily, it will only be a twice a week occurrence. Uh, plus and the Sunday videos. Plus the Sunday videos, they will go uh, as usual, and they will go also while we are in our absence while we are recuperating from the from our illness uh, because those were recorded prior to uh, the pandemic so those videos are recorded in january uh, so anyway it's going to be the last episode tomorrow and we want to have 27 patches for you guys 
so that you, if you want to do a third cushion, you can do that. Therefore, we have um, a second blo uh, block today, <laughs> and this one has a, a nice message. So, can you read what it Alone says? Alone together. I heard that was a phrase people used during this time. Yes, alone together. This is a reminder that if you're isolated and lonely, please know that you're not alone. We're with you all the way. And so are millions and millions of people all over the world. And uh, we can still interact. <laughs> and we have roses. So two blocks today. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the pattern, the design on this one here. Because you've got this lovely girl, and uh, she's holding hands with two other people. I'm, I don't know if they're boys or girls. It doesn't really two matter. Two boys and one girl, or you can change. You oh, want to have two boys and two could, girls and one boy, or if you just want to have boys. Or it could be girls wearing pants. Or, uh, it can be anything. Yeah, we're gender fluid Do now. we actually have to know no. who, what they are? They're just people... <laughs> They're just people holding hands. And, 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 and sometimes, like, if you say it's boys and girls, some people are insulted. Yeah. But I think it's... Yeah, but I like the I gender... Why. I like it when it's gender neutral nowadays. But who cares? Yeah. Anyway, this is, this is a, a traditional pattern. You're, you're um, you know, you're going, you're going on, onto a sidetrack now. <laughs> so instead of talking about gender fluidity, let's talk about the traditional <laughs> pattern. Uh, which is one of my favorite patterns, and this is a very old design, isn't it, Arne? Yeah, this is old. I think we, talk, we, we talked about it on, on the sweater that uh, the crown prince, which is now the king, used. Uh, it was part of the pattern. I no, mean? it wasn't. Wasn't it? No. No. This is a. Uh, no, that's the one we made for yes. the. Arts and Crafts Art, Association. Yeah. Now, this pattern is a traditional pattern, uh, and it is from sweaters, old sweaters. And mittens. And mittens. And uh, I love it because, uh, you know, they're alone, but they're together. And one day, maybe they're separated. Maybe there's plexiglass here between them. <laughs> Are but they all? Actually, maybe but one day, one day in the future, later, they will be wearing, uh, they will be holding hands again when the virus is gone and celebrating. And I love this pattern because it can be so much. Now, imagine if it's round. Imagine if it's knitted on the round. Let's put it around the glass. Uh, we actually did... A Christmas ball, which had it all the way around. And, and we, they dance around. We call that the dance around the tree because in Norway, the adults and the little children, we dance around the tree for Christmas Eve. So this pattern is very uh, convertible. It can mean so many different things. But for our podcast and for our knit along, we've got alone together, uh, longing for days when uh, we can be together with people again. Uh, we have to be alone now because it's better for our own good. But it doesn't mean that, I mean, we're, we're isolated, but we're not alone. We're together with a lot of people <laughs> all over the world, yeah. I think. Does it make sense? Yeah. I'm getting tired. Yeah, I, I can, I, I know. <laughs> so you can finish it now. Anyway, this is the, uh, this is the uh, 20th episode. And tomorrow we are on to our last. We don't know what we're going to call the podcast when we come back. And we don't know when we'll be back. All we know is that uh, we will be taking a long break so that I may recover uh, from uh, post-viral syndrome after having COVID-19 And we're going to knit a lot weeks. of blocks. We're going to be knitting a lot of blocks, and eventually we will come back. If you want to uh, suggest a name for our uh, new um, podcast, please put, the, put it in the comments field below. <laughs> put a little comment what you think it should be called. We like uh, including the Arne and Carlos name, so... Um, we haven't decided yet. Up to now, it's the Arne and Carlos uh, twice a week podcast, uh, which is boring. So uh, <laughs> help us out, please. And we will announce a name uh, as soon as we announce when the podcast will be back. Still, it's not all over yet. We still have one more episode to go, which we are looking forward to. And remember that you can also go to uh, the Knit Stars page uh, and sign up uh, for the for uh, pre-order uh, Knit Stars 5 or get all the other knit stars or the ones you've missed and you can also do that if you look at the first comment <laughs> here there's a link click on that link and it will take you to uh, the knit stars page and if you click on our link uh, we get a little commission which means you're supporting us in a time uh, of financial uh, problems so uh, we thank you so much for that support uh, and now the formalities are now. You're, you <laughs> but, always do them now. Yeah, but now we have, we have to stop. Look at the light. It's mm. 
you're in the dark. Yeah. Uh, so. Closer to you. <laughs> Darkness style. <laughs> this is strange. Okay, so uh, see you tomorrow and remember to subscribe because then you get. All the videos, and oh, no, if no, you no, don't no, like no, it, no, 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 no. I started going. in the end now. Yeah, I, I should. I think you should do it. Okay, I'm gonna try. I've been modeling. I'm. It's a hard work. I've okay. been climbing. So we hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please give it a big thumbs up, and please make sure to give us a comment and tell us about uh, you know anything you might want to tell us, but especially what we should call our podcast. Uh, if you turn on your notifications, you will never ever miss an episode. So that's a great thing because sometimes we will post when nobody's expecting it. You, you should do it simple. You're tired, you I said. Know. You know. Uh, and then remember, or please subscribe to our channel if you're not doing it. It's a lovely family of subscribers and it's growing and growing every day. So um, while I go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever can't manage to finish. The... Yeah, I'm going to go take a nap now. And all that is left to do is thank you so much for watching. <laughs> And see you tomorrow for the final episode of the Arne and Carlos Quarantine Knitting Podcast. Bye. <laughs> Bye. This is oh. <laughs> it's it's bedtime. Yeah. <laughs>